Okie dokie. Second example for this problem. If you'd like more of a breakdown, please visit the first example. I'll go into a little more depth in this problem uh, specifically. I'll actually do a second, third, and fourth example for this type of problem just to knock them all out, just so you can see a few different cases in one sitting. So in this problem, they say there are initially 26,000 people and they say individuals can be infected multiple times. What does this mean? This means that we can eliminate any answers that don't have R equals zero as part of its answer because R represents the number of individuals who are resistant. And if they tell us that individuals can be infected multiple times, even after getting better, then that means no one is resistant to this disease, which or to both diseases, which is crazy. All right. So it's either B or C, and then we just need to calculate the number of susceptible individuals. So starting with the initial 26,000 population, we are just going to subtract the number of people who are currently ill, because the number of people who are ill are not susceptible at the moment. The people who have been ill and recovered, however, are still susceptible because it says they can be infected multiple times even after getting better. So that 5,200 is going to remain in the susceptible category. So starting with 26,000, we are just subtracting the 6,708 or 6,708, and we are also subtracting the 1,092, and that's it. So get rid of some of this here so 26,000 minus 6708 minus 1092 perfect all right so we have 18,200 which is one of the answers it looks like B is our answer so break out the eraser we see B is our answer all right let's jump to number three or example three uh, let's see all right Starting with 23,000, it says once they recover, they are resistant to both diseases, which means we will find R by finding the number of people who have recovered from both diseases total. So we can eliminate the one that has R equals zero because people will be resistant in this case. So it says um, we have this many people ill with one, this many people ill with the other, it says 6440 have been ill and recovered. So hopefully just 6440 is our recovered or resistant amount. So we can eliminate options A and B because the people who have been ill and recovered are now those who are resistant. So now we are calculating the number of susceptible. So starting with 23,000, we are going to subtract the number of people who are ill with both, you know, uh, with either disease. So subtracting 5796, subtracting 2484. And we also want to subtract the 6440 because that is the number of people who have been ill and recovered. So they are no longer susceptible to getting the disease again since they've already had it and recovered. So we have 23,000 minus all these values and calculating it here, we get 8,280 or 8,280. So we eliminate option C and it looks like E is our best answer. Let's break out the eraser and we see that E is in fact our answer. All right, example number four, we are starting with 20,000 people. There's two different diseases, but they can be infected multiple times. So because they can be infected multiple times, the R value that represents the number of individuals who are resistant must be zero because nobody is resistant to this disease if they can get it multiple times, if they can be infected multiple times. So we eliminate all the options where R is not equal to zero. So between A or C, we are finding the number of susceptible individuals. So always starting with the total always subtracting the number of people who are currently ill with either disease, so 3256 and 1144. And then because um, the rest of the town has been ill and recovered, 
However, they can be infected multiple times. They are still susceptible to getting either disease. So really just subtracting the number of people who are ill with either disease is all we need to do. So 20,000 minus 3256 and 1144 gives us 15,600. Whoa. Fifth. 15,600 as a value of susceptible people. So we break out the eraser to see that A is in fact our answer. I hope this was a fair breakdown of these three problems. If you have any questions, please let me know.